Hey all, it's time for part 33 of my WWE Smackdown Shut Your Mouth Let's Play. Just on a side note here, We Men's Winter of Wrestling is ready to go, just have to wait for winter to actually roll around here. It's only the 17th and not the 21st. But hey, I got other things to do in the meantime. Gotta get back into this a little bit. I still got some stuff recorded for after it. I'm actually really looking forward to all the footage that comes in the month of June, just because there's some really ridiculous stuff that happens. I do need to record after that, though. I'm still a little behind, but you know, whatever. Anyway, we're still heading forward onto that match with Rikishi at Backlash, where I will take him on for the Intercontinental Championship. This is the match against Rob Van Dam that I was speaking of before. And of course, we've already seen this a number of times, so there's not much to really say. I'm, I'm a little late on saying this, but I do have a new entrance theme for my wrestler at this point. I know we didn't get to see it here, but I do believe that just because of how this is edited, I can see the timeline that uh, I should be... You should hear it. Again, I mean, you've heard it in two parts before this, but you will hear it again. Now then, recently we have had the Slammy Awards go off, and we've had the TLC pay-per-view go off, and NXT Our Evolution. That's one that I really want to speak about, but first, start with the Slammy Awards. It's always a show that I watch, but, you know, it, it was clearly a little rigged this time, but, I mean, big deal. I personally think that it would have been better to give Brock Lesnar the Superstar of the Year award trophy just because that's that's more fuel to the fire that they could add. And that's just something they could add to him with the almost inevitable feud between him and Roman Reigns. Because we know that's coming, and I only say almost inevitable because it is WWE and anything can happen. Sure, it seems predictable sometimes, but sometimes it just takes something different right out of the blue. Anyway, it was a decent show. TLC, on the other hand, was really underwhelming. Especially when you compare it to the NXT special that went on not too long before that. NXT, of course, being the developmental brand for WWE. And that was a really fun show. I mean, I didn't get to watch it at first just because I had a class that night. But man, that was great started with Kevin Owens' debut, and I mean, a lot of these indie wrestlers that everyone goes on about, I haven't seen a lot of, so my first time seeing them is in the WWE. And man, Kevin Owens, that guy, he was so good, he was just so much fun to watch. I love that flip over the rope he did, that, you don't see guys his weight doing that that often, if at all. I I think they got something special with him. And I mean, I can't knock on CJ Parker either. That's a guy that I always thought, hey, he's just going to be another jobber. But man, that guy, he really can deliver. I mean, that, that palm strike where he bloodied Kevin Owens' nose and split his palm, which looked like the most painful looking thing that I've seen in wrestling in a long time. Oh, it just added to it. What was the next match? The Tag Team Championships? Eh, I like Callisto. I wish I could say that I still like Sin Cara, and I mean, I really want to because it's Hunico, and I like Hunico. At least I did until it seemed that he's kind of just going through the motions and slowing down. Callisto, man. Maybe another Rey Mysterio right there. They gotta be careful with him. And just going off that for a minute, you see the card thing there? The card thing. The card itself. <laughs> I wasn't on there, and I was a little worried at first. Not gonna lie. I thought, um, aren't I supposed to have a match? Don't worry, it fixes itself up here. I believe I end up in the first match instead of that triple threat at the end. I don't get to walk around backstage. Oh yeah, but first we have to have Stacy Keebler dance for us, which is... <laughs> This happens a few times in the next uh, little while here, or at least twice. 
I want to say this would be sexy, but I'm looking at a game that was released in 2002, and the, a, a video game model with the most dead eyes. It, it's just weird. I mean, I get that's what happened in real life at the time. I get that they had these exposés and dance-offs, and they, they still do, just not a lot. But it just doesn't translate well to a video game. I mean, I even think the brawn panties matches are pushing it a little bit. Oh well. I was a dick to King here, but you know, that's my character, so... I'll be a dick to him if I want. But, yeah, as you can see, now I'm in that match with Rikishi. Back to NXT, I, took, I talked about the first couple matches. Second match was, or the third match was the squash match with Baron Corbin and uh, some jobber guy that I don't really know. I don't like Baron Corbin that much. I, I think he's really goofy and stupid looking for one thing. He looks like a fat guy that just slimmed down and got a bunch of tattoos. That's exactly what he looks like. Um, and I hate his finisher because it's the complete shot. It's basically the finisher they give to anyone who is new. And I mean, people are going to go, Oh, well, Fondango uses the complete shot, and Bray Wyatt, everyone loves Bray Wyatt. I don't like their finishers. If it's the complete shot, I don't like it. Same with our truth even though I'm not sure if he's still using that or not. But the point is, the complete shot. Unless you're a beginning jobber and you're still finding your footing, you don't want to use it. And I mean, people can go on about how it being a variation. It's still the complete shot. It's still awful. It's still stupid. I hate that finisher. At least the Ozone looks nice. <sighs> anyway, not much to say about Baron Corbin. I wish I could say that I want Bull Dempsey to just roll over him and beat the shit out of him, but I've read the spoilers. And sadly, that's not what's going to happen. Anyway, the match after that, this one was arguably match of the night, was the tag match between the Ascension against Hideo Itami and Finn Balor. Now, as far as the Ascension go, I'm not a big fan of theirs. I think, well, in Victor's case, he's about as plain and average as plain and average can be. There's nothing special about him. In Connor's case, He's just a big, clumsy guy. But I will say that he's pretty damn good at telling a story and playing a character. So I can give him that anyway. But... It's the other guys. Now, Hideo Itami, he's definitely fun to watch wrestle. And he's definitely better than he was. I mean, it's the first time I've been interested in him since his original debut. He's definitely got that Japanese style, though. But Finn Balor, my god, that... Oh, god, that face paint. The war paint, the entrance, everything about him. It was just the best thing I've ever seen. One, or one of the best things I've ever seen in wrestling, ever. It just fits so well, and I can watch that entrance over and over, and I can just watch him wrestle over and over. I want to see him succeed. What is it with Irish guys? First Seamus, then Finn Balor. Seriously. Irish wrestlers must be the best or something. Um, the Divas match was after that. I didn't watch that just because I can't stand Sasha Banks. I just hate her. And I mean, this isn't a, I want her to get beaten hate. This is an, I'm going to change the channel when she's on TV. I just can't stand her. And it's a shame, because I really like Charlotte. And I think she's really good, too. The thing about the Divas in WWE is that I think all of them just act clumsy. And I don't get it. I mean, even the ones that are supposed to be really good, they seem really clumsy. I mean, AJ does. Paige does some of the time. The only one I kind of excuse is Emma, because that's her gimmick, to be clumsy. I don't get that with Charlotte, and that's what I like about her. She makes it seem real, she doesn't make it seem like she's... awkward out there. 
And then, of course, just to wrap things up, Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville, great match. Loved the heel turn at the end with um, Kevin Owens. I mean, it's really hard to top that match. It really told the story that it needed to. Anyway, speaking of winning championships, I'm the Intercontinental Champion now. Let's see how long I can keep this. We're going to find out uh, starting in the next part and starting in the next month with the month of June. Nothing really important to unlock here. I think I just unlocked the create parts. Yeah, I did. I wanted movesets, but oh well. You can't always get what you want. Anyway, kind of a random part today, but uh, we will see you all next time when I get some video editing done here. And uh, yeah, see you for June.